could you explain why Peter appears to have relinquished the leadership role in Acts 15 and why there is no mention of the casting of lots for James as there was with Matthias? Let me just start by congratulating you all. You are submitting some good questions, some very thoughtful questions, some tough questions, and uh, we'll do the best we can with them. You can decide for yourself what is true or not, but I appreciate the amount of thought that has been put into these questions. So let's, what, what do we do with this one? Can you explain why Peter appears to have relinquished the leadership role and why there's no mention of the casting lots for James as there was with Matthias? Here's what I would tell you uh, you should consider. Scripture does not specifically give a reason, as far as I know, as to why James became the leader of the church in Jerusalem instead of Peter. To my knowledge, it's never explicitly addressed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a couple thoughts that I think are helpful in thinking about the question. And we'll start with this. James does not have primacy or superiority over Peter in the millennial kingdom or the new heaven and the new earth. I'm going to say that again. Although James is the leader of the Jerusalem church in, in the book of Acts, James does not have a leadership authority position over Peter either in the millennial kingdom or the new heaven and the new earth. It's only during the book of Acts that James has that position. Let me prove that to you. Get Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19, verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So when the regeneration occurs and there are 12 thrones that are given to judge the 12 tribes of Israel, who sits on them? Well, not James, the Lord's brother. It's the 12 apostles. You know that because Matthew 19, 28 specifically says that. Look with me at Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. And verse 10, Revelation 21, verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. So in Revelation 21, we're seeing the, the new Jerusalem. Verse 12. And it had, and had a great wall and high and had 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So the New Jerusalem has 12 gates, and the names on the gates are the names of the tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 14, And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So the wall that surrounds the New Jerusalem, it pays tribute to, it mentions the 12 apostles, it doesn't mention James. So what we can see from that is, does James have a superior position to Peter in the millennial kingdom? No. Does he have a superior position in the New Jerusalem? No. He, it, it's something that he only has during the book of Acts. So that's the first thing we need to notice. Here's the second thing we need to notice. When is the first time in the book of Acts that James is described as the leader of the church in Jerusalem? When does that occur? Get with me Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. And look with me at verse 17. Acts 12, 17. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now, if you read the book of Acts and you search for the word James and you see the appearances where James appears, this is the first time that James would be thought of as in a leadership role, as, as having a role of some uh, rulership importance 
in, in the nation of Israel. Now notice with me Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, verse 2, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword. So in Acts chapter 12, verse 2, James the brother of John, who is of the twelve, he's killed at that time. So in Acts 12, 17, when we see this instruction to go tell James, well, that's not the James that just died several verses before. That's James the Lord's brother. So Acts 12, 17 is the first time that you see James the Lord's brother in a position of authority. Well, why is that significant? I'm going to suggest this to you. Acts 12 is after Acts 9. Acts 9 is where the Apostle Paul gets saved, and Acts 9 is where the diminishing of Israel begins. And if, if you would think about this with me, Romans 10 says, The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. And here's what happens in this world. People testify to the truth of the Bible from their own mouth, and they don't even realize it. To give you one example, when you're mad at someone, you may tell them, go jump in a lake. Well, why would you tell them to jump in a lake? Lakes often are nice to jump into. It, they're a fun place to go water skiing. They can be a relaxing place to bathe. Why would you tell someone to go jump in a lake? And for that matter, why don't you say, go jump in a pond or a pool or a lake or a stream? Well, the reason why people say, go jump in a lake is what they're really saying in their heart is, go jump in the lake of fire. In other words, go to hell. Now, what's happening there is people by their very words are testifying to the truth of the Bible because, we, of course, we know there is a lake of fire. Now, what's fascinating is this. The world uses the expression, we robbed Peter to pay Paul. Lost people use that expression all the time. They never say, we robbed Jim to pay Fred. They never say, we robbed Bert to, to pay Ernie. They, they, they never say that. They always say, we robbed Peter to pay Paul. And the reason why they say that is this. If you just read the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, who's the most important person in terms of the leadership of the kingdom church? Well, it's obviously Peter. It's described as Peter standing up with the eleven. At the end of the book of Acts, do you even read about Peter? You don't. In fact, Peter's name doesn't even appear in the book of Acts after Acts 15, verse 7. And the reason why is what God did is God put the kingdom program on hold, and he instituted the dispensation of grace. When God instituted the dispensation of grace, who was the apostle of the Gentiles? Who was given the revelation of the mystery? It was Paul. So when you read the book of Acts, you can see there's a switch. There's a switch from Peter being the lead human character to Paul being the lead human character. And that's why people say that we robbed Peter to pay Paul. So think about this with me, if you would. The first time that we see James mentioned prominently, it's in Acts chapter 12. It's after Acts 9. It's after the diminishing of Israel has begun. It's after the robbing of Peter has started to occur. We don't see James being in a position of priority before that. So what I would suggest to you is what you see happen in the book of Acts is just as you see the fall and diminishing of Israel, you see the fall and diminishing of Peter's authority. Now, let's be clear. Will Peter ultimately have his position of authority? Yes, he will. It just didn't happen during the book of Acts. I would suggest to you that's why James rises to a, a position of prominence. It's because Israel and Peter are diminishing at that time. Now, let me deal with the second part of the question. Why didn't they cast lots to select James? And my answer to that would simply be that not every decision that the kingdom church made involved the casting of lots. If you read about the decision they made in Acts 15 at the Jerusalem Council, they didn't cast lots to decide what they were going to do. We, we covered earlier tonight Acts chapter 6, where they were appointing 
uh, folks to be over the daily ministration. There's no record in Acts chapter 6 as to the casting of lots. So the uh, the reason they, they didn't cast lots, I think, is there, there wasn't a need to cast lots because not every decision that was made in the book of Acts by the kingdom church used the casting of lots. Uh, they just didn't do that. 